Artlaw TV presents Site-Specific Art, Protecting the Artist's Vision. I think that a commissioner has to trust an artist on the basis of previous work. And they have to, I think very often, they ask, um, they ask a number of artists because they can't make up their mind what they want. And, and I, don't, I think that that's an unfair position for, for an artist. Um, and that the commissioner should make up their mind on the basis of previous work and decide to trust an artist to make a work for them. Um, and that, and they'll get a better work. <laughs> I'm really interested in the work of being properly integrated with the architecture and with the fabric of the building. So that really means that I need to be in before the main contractor comes in um, so that my work can be accommodated in the main contract. In fact, I'm, uh, I'm commissioned by the client, um, not by the contractor, um, which is very important. With a site-specific work being commissioned, even though the, the commissioner is not necessarily going to be, uh, say, building the environment, or they're probably responsible for um, commissioning the building of the environment within which the work, the artwork, is going to be located, then it's important that it's understood and agreed and contractually written down between the artist and the commissioner that they are meeting the needs or the commissioning needs of the commissioner and not necessarily uh, being uh, commissioned by or working to uh, the building contractor for example which might be working also for the commissioner but within the contract itself you would expect some kind of arrangements to be agreed as to how and when the artist will, will work with any uh, builder or subcontractors of the builder on the site that's being developed. Susanna Heron was commissioned to make a new work at the Sainsbury Laboratory in Cambridge. I came in a little later than I would have liked to have come in in Cambridge. Um, the, the building had already been designed um, it was a commission I was particularly interested to do because, because of its involvement with the Cambridge Herbarium and the Botanical Garden, um, which I have a, a great interest in. So that made it a particularly interesting commission for me. When I saw the building, I decided that what I wanted to do was to carve a relief in stone because parts of the building were built in stone and I wanted to use that. And I chose a, a corridor, a narrow corridor, that effectively f forms the backdrop to the lecture theatre. Um, it connects one outside space to another, so there is, there is a relationship to outside spaces. Site specificity is really important to both the artist and the commissioner and the contract between them should go into as much detail as possible to be clear to both of them uh, what is required from the site and obviously from the artist locating the work in the site. It could be, for example, that the work has a specific artistic aesthetic uh, relationship to the climate, the wind, the rain, the snow, the light, in relation to kinetic works, it could be that because the work is going to move in some way, like a, a tangly work, uh, which we, we know moves, or a colder, for example, that it's important that it's located in a certain direction or facing a certain way. Um, and the contract should help both the artist and commissioner to have a certain amount of flexibility and freedom but uh, to be as clear as possible about what that work should uh, eventually uh, look like when it's located. Artists are also given a degree of protection by artists' moral rights. 
the artist has an absolute right not to have the integrity of their work destroyed or changed or damaged in any way in the future. So that if the work is um, altered or amended or changed or added to or something is deleted from it, then the artist has an absolute right uh, to use the law to have that work corrected to be put back into its original position which the artist intended it to be in. The artist may also need to take practical measures to ensure that obligations are being met to his or her satisfaction. I was talking to the uh, stone contractor in Cambridge last week because we had we'd gone back to the site um, in order to um, redo uh, some of the pointing on the work. And we were talking about the difficulties in communication because I'd been trying to get this work done for four months. The, the building is now handed over, the main contractor has left, the people who were making the work for me on site are now working on another site. And I need, you know, once I've got a relationship with um, a subcontractor, I need it to be, it, it's a very personal one, I can't, it, it's not, something that just anybody can pick up. So we had to get the same, um, the same craftsman back on site. When I went back to Cambridge this week, um, when I arrived, um, I found that they, in fact, hadn't got any lighting and they were working on a relief in, in a very dim, dimly lit corridor. So I... Um, persuaded them to hire some lighting and then they could see what they were doing. Once the work has been completed, the final concern is the ongoing maintenance of the work over its lifetime. So far as future maintenance of the work is concerned, the contract really needs to be clear about how long the artist says the work is going to last for. And having agreed how long the work will last for in a properly maintained uh, condition, then the contract needs to go on to make some agreement between them about how the work will be maintained. And for these purposes, the artist needs to carefully construct what I call a maintenance manual or uh, a book of directions, if you like, as to what the commissioner needs to do to look after the work and make sure it's maintained in, in good condition for its lifetime. Large-scale commissions are complex projects. Contracts can avoid future complications by acting as an effective project management tool, as well as protecting the artist's vision and the integrity of the work. For further details of this programme and other programmes by Artlaw TV, please go to www.artquest.org.uk.